So thank you everyone who are here. I'm very surprised that this last minute uh, tech talk was it's, high, it's well attended. And we have quite a few VCs. Ooh, the projection coming up. Okay, well anyhow, uh, my name is Christine Moon. I'm a manager on the International Engineering Ops team. So the background on this talk, I got a call from my friend who's in DC last Friday asking, hey, we have Dr. Kim coming into town. Are you willing to host a talk? And you know, it's, it's very last minute, but we were able to pull it off. We found the room, and we found people who were interested, and people who were concerned as well about the talk. So I'm very excited about this talk because I think uh, we have people from a whole different political spectrum uh, with interest on this topic. But I do want to remind you that this talk is being recorded, and that uh, when we do go into Q&A session, or even during the talk, uh, please be res respectful to your um, fellow audience and also to the speaker. And uh, rather than making this a politically charged uh, debate or discussion, I would really like to focus on listening and learning and learning more about what it is they're trying to do. Um, so that's my only thing. And uh, I just want to follow up that I myself am ignorant about what's going on in North Korea. I have no ties. Um, and I just met Dr. Kim today. And I'm here to learn and listen. And you know, I, I would love to hear about what's going on. So um, I just don't want to go too much into his bio, except for the fact that he's a vice president of uh, Pyongyang University of Science and Technology. And you guys saw the background uh, on his educational background. But he's a longtime Silicon Valley uh, resident. Uh, he still has a home in Fremont. And he's here with us today to share with us what's been going on um, with the university. Please uh, welcome him. Thank you. And again, uh, I was born and raised in Seoul, Korea. And after my college there, I came to the United States for my study in the Bay Area. Uh, UC Berkeley was my uh, graduate study in mechanical engineering. Um, after that, I spent uh, over 30 years before I decided to go on my second career in my life. Uh, to make the decision, I realized that I was born in 1946. That's um, when I was four years old. Then I was in that uh, Korean War time. And as you know, right after the war, the whole country was torn off. And uh, I spent pretty miserable things. But uh, with someone's help, somebody's help, and that unconditional you know, care and love, then I could be in the United States and con continuing my study and uh, my career. And I thought I was uh, successful in a sense. So that was a time to pay back to those people who is needed. So I joined a group of people in the uh, northeastern corner of uh, China, where the borders to, uh, uh, borders to uh, North Korea, uh, there was a school uh, teaching that Korean ethnic Chinese uh, for their college level study that made their life changed just like me. So the, about 200 foreigners, including Korean Chinese, Korean Americans, and all over the United States and others, about 13 countries, over 200 faculty members is teaching and giving their lives to those uh, in that area people who was pretty much uh, uh, deprived, in a sense. Uh, no hope, no you know, education. But uh, after that uh, uh, interface, a lot of them were successful like uh, us. So yeah, there was a uh, uh, very meaningful life of, you know, in my uh, career. So I spent about six and a half years as a teacher there. And I also uh, involved in the school administration as a vice, vice president of Yambian University of Science Technology. All I was working in that time, uh, I was asked to be a project manager for this new school in Pyongyang. So I worked as the project manager. Uh, the reason was I was the project manager of a, a power projects in Bechtel Power Corporation and also uh, Pacific Gas and Electric Company in this area. So that was you know, my brief background. And I have uh, two kids living in San Fran uh, Fremont area. And OK, 
Okay, let's go from here. So why don't I give you, uh, my plan is uh, give you 10 minutes video uh, showing Yeonbyon University of Science Technology. And another part is uh, Pyongyang University of Science Technology. And uh, historically, we had a opening ceremony, or you can say building dedication ceremony, and um, present inauguration uh, ceremony in September last year. That was a historical moment. The school is open. Now we are waiting for the students in ap April. That's where we are. So after this video clip, then I will uh, give you a more detailed story. As the new chapter in the history of Northeastern Asia opens, Korea and China are coming together for a new level of partnership for the 21st century Pacific Rim era. China, whose northeastern borders with Korea, is formed by Tumen River originating from Pekdu Mountain. The entire nation of China is developing rapidly to take her place in the international community, and Yanji is no exception. In the midst of rapid changes, Yanbian University of Science and Technology stands as the first of foreign Chinese joint venture educational institution. In 1991, even before the international relationship was formed between Korea and China, Yust was approved by the China Bureau of Education and Jilin Provincial Government and it had its historic beginning in September 1992. A unique campus with unmatched qualities in China, East is a place of learning, nurturing the future leaders of China and Korean Chinese community who will lead the era of Northeastern Asia. Engineering schools focusing on the latest technology and practical applications. School of Materials, Mechanical and Automation Engineering. School of Biochemical Engineering. School of Computer, Electronics, and Telecommunication. School of Architectural Engineering. School of Business, Nurturing the Future CEOs of China. Befitting this global university, School of Western and Eastern Languages, which include English, German, and Korean departments. In addition, English Conversation Department and General English Education Department provide intensive English education for all students. The goal is to produce future leaders who are multilingual, fluent in English, Korean, and Chinese. The School of Nursing Science training the future leaders in the field of nursing, making it a total of nine colleges, 12 departments, and 35 research institutes at UST. Two most unique features of UST are the diversity and integrity-focused education. Faculty and staff members from all corners of the world, and Han Chinese, Korean Chinese, Russian, and exchange students from abroad produce diversity through which students benefit both academically and socially. All first and second year students are required to live in dormitories in order to learn the community spirit. 
Under the motto of creativity, cooperation, and volunteerism, students learn the community spirit and practical experiences through various internships and community service activities. Various student clubs also enhance the student's college experience. Used graduates in the world. Over 2,300 graduates in 12 years. Working for leading global companies in China. While 15% went abroad for graduate studies. Unlike other universities, Used provides opportunities for the graduates to return to school when the need for further education arises. Leaders who understand and appreciate both Chinese and Korean cultures will serve as a bridge between China and Korea, and it is in training and educating such leaders that Used will make its contribution to the 21st century Northeastern Asia. Pyongyang University of Science and Technology, a project for the reconciliation of the North and South of Korea. The campus of this exciting new university is on a site of great historical interest. In March 2001, Dr. James Kim, president of Yust in China, was appointed by North Korea to be president of PUST and asked to build a university like Yust in their country. Now, all the basic construction is complete with heat and electricity in all the buildings on campus. In the first half of 2007, along with a marble exterior put up on the IT building and the multi-purpose complex and the paving of the campus access road, basic construction was done on the service center, research and development center, student center, and school garage. In addition, student and faculty dorms were painted and readied for interior work. In the second half of 2007, we celebrated the completion of construction work on all of the main buildings and of the enclosed hallway connecting the whole campus. We are on the verge of completing all preparatory construction. To open the school on schedule, we need your help to purchase equipment prerequisite for the operation of a world-class university. Having waited and worked together with you these several years for the realization of this amazing dream, we are now filled with excitement to see how close we are to the goal. PUST will be the very first international university in North Korea working toward the reconciliation of the North and South. We invite and challenge you to participate in this great historical event in the history of the Korean people. The Pyongyang University of Science and Technology, PUST, held its first phase building dedication ceremony on September 16th. Various officials attended the ceremony, including James Kim, the founding president of the Pyongyang University of Science and Technology, and members of the delegation he brought with him to celebrate the completion. Several speeches were delivered at the ceremony. After Dr. Kim was officially installed as PUST co-president, the whole delegation took a tour of this newly constructed campus.
Well, that um, shows there are two schools. Uh, without explanation of uh, Yambian University of Science Technology, we call that used. Uh, without understanding what used, it's hard to explain the pushed, which is in Pyongyang, Pyongyang University of Science and Technology. So I try to connect this pushed and used. The word I'm going to use is a dream. One person's dream becomes his you know, vision. And uh, lifetime uh, vision makes him work on uh, such as uh, uh, Yambian University of Science Technology. So Kim Jin Kyung, uh, one person's dream become uh, the rest of us, uh, especially working for somebody else's success. That's the, uh, the main reason we are, we are there. And that can be explained by the uh, unconditional love toward the people there. So later on, I would say, why we do this in North Korea? To help the people there. And Yanji is right above where the uh, red dot is, and also um, this is uh, about 24 years ago when Dr. Kim was invited by uh, so uh, Chinese uh, uh, group to Beijing, and he met a uh, group of young, you know, adults, and he realized that. Uh, he need more uh, good vehicle to teach youngsters like a school. So in that region of uh, Yambian, uh, he started a school uh, in a place really nobody thought about. And he built a school. And in five years, the school had a shape. And starting a school in 1992, then in 1993, become a uh, junior college level, then 1996, four-year college. And you can imagine about 100 people uh, you know, gathered there. Uh, some of them have a vision of the school becoming like this in 17 years. So right now, the school used to has about 1,800 undergraduate students, and uh, so far, about 3,000 graduates out of this school. And uh, out of that, about 400 uh, st students ad advanced for their degrees. So uh, they, some of them in the United States, some of them in the Europe, and some of them in uh, Korea. And out of that, about, uh, um, OK, let me go back. The uh, community in used right now 13 countries faculties come from over 200 uh, faculty members and with their family 500 faculty you know foreigners in the one location we are happy family with the students and even exchange students within the uh, China and uh, some of uh, our graduates uh, got their PhDs and, and master's degree, then came back to the school to join us as a faculty member. There are about 20 uh, used alumni working with us as a faculty, and another 20 working as a administrative staff. So that we feel very good about it. So this dream continues on to Pyongyang. Again, this is to help the you know, people. Uh, as you heard that this uh, project became North and South Korean cooperative project, and it was uh, legally operated. And with much uh, you know, uh, difficulties, the buildings are all done and ready to accept the students. Mm. Right now, we're going to start with engineering school and business school, and also school of uh, global education. Uh, when it, you know, fully in operation, graduate study will be around 600 students 
and undergraduate will be around 2,000. And, but initially this spring, we will start with 60 graduate students and 150 undergraduate students in three schools. And faculty members eventually will be 250 uh, from all over the world, but uh, initially around 40 to 50 this year. Um, teaching language will be English. That's something I want to underscore that. And uh, this school is different from the other universities in, uh, in North Korea, such as internet will be available for the students and faculty members. So upper top right side is uh, where the uh, used is. Then left bottom, that's where uh, post will be. Uh, the school was designed by uh, Jangnim Konchu, which is a reputable company in South Korea, which designed the Incheon International Airport, which is pretty good design, you know, I was told. Uh, out of these uh, nice buildings, the phase one uh, consists of these 17 buildings, uh, is completed and uh, will be used for first phase of class. Just a uh, you know, quick history of the buildings, how it went up. And uh, right now it is ready and ready for students coming in. Uh, by the way, do you see uh, the uh, apartment behind this school? That's where southern part of Pyongyang I'm talking about. Yeah, between the buildings, you, you see the, uh, uh, the, what do you call that? Uh, about those buildings, about 25, 30 uh, stories of uh, apartments, uh, which uh, showing the uh, skyline of a uh, southern part of uh, Pyongyang. So in September last year, a group of uh, people from all over the world during the uh, uh, de building dedication ceremony, as you saw, tape cutting. And it was published in their official newspaper. So the school is official in North Korea and also uh, uh, internationally. The reason this is significant moment was, so far, I've been working on the six and a half years. You know, I was asked, is it going to be really in operational? After we complete the building, it will be taken away by the North Koreans. So why you do that? That question really hurt me. But uh, finally, you know, North Korean c came out and saying, this school is an international school. And uh, President Kim was uh, uh, installed as an operational president that shows the world this is not their school. This is an international school. In addition to that, uh, we, uh, we apply for EAR, Export Ad Ad Regulation Ad Ad Administration, is the right word? EAR, EAR to Commerce Department to make that uh, more uh, complete application. Uh, we asked the North Korean to make sure this is international school. So they were told uh, this is going to be international school. And uh, all the equipment we are bringing in inside of the school will be uh, property of uh, international community. And if there's any question, misuse, then you can come in and inspect any time we will cooperate. So that is the spirit of the school. The school, uh, we say this school will be different from the rest of the uh, universities inside of North, North Korea. As uh, we uh, tried and we have a track record of making use different from the rest of uh, Chinese universities in three areas, uh, practicality and creativity and global minded. So outcome is honest, sincere, and uh, the students, alumni, uh, with a global sense. 
So they are very uh, good at working with uh, others and international community. So with that you know, track record, uh, we are going to go in and teach them uh, in North Korea. Undergraduate student uh, will be two plus three, meaning that two years undeclared major and uh, three years uh, majored area. And graduate students will learn one plus two system, one uh, you know, emph emphasis on English and basic science, then two years in their majors. So three years in graduate and five years in undergraduate, that's what we're going to start with. One more time, teaching language in graduate school is uh, fully English. And grad undergraduate, we will teach them one year uh, very accelerated uh, English courses in first year, then second, third, so that they can be uh, uh, taught by English in third and fourth year. Schools, for three years, schools will be uh, the one which we're going to start with. Information and communication technology and industry and management and agriculture and food and life science. Industry and management is their term of MBA. But in, not only MBA, uh, they ask us to teach uh, trade and you know, tariff and finance and banking and all those. So uh, we are very uh, excited about that. And agriculture, again, you know, we want to uh, focus on to feed the people there. So that is our emphasis on that. Information technology, uh, they need help, outside help, especially, uh, you know, South Korean uh, friend and brother and sisters, uh, they want to, uh, you know, get on the industry uh, which they will help. So not only the school, we also designed a techno park, like a Silicon Valley eventually, so that South Korean and U.S. companies can come in uh, in that campus. Uh, so. Uh, our students can go uh, you know, work there and also that uh, the businesses can utilize all those highly educated people in Pyongyang. So we want to use this school as a gateway for both sides, you know, business and research centers and all over the uh, world can use this Pyongyang University of Science and Technology as a gateway go in and uh, work with uh, the people inside. And also inside, you know, uh, opportunity can work with outsiders through this uh, uh, campus and facilities. To make it happen, we want to make this uh, school and techno park as a special district. The district, special district concept is nothing new. It is uh, guaranteeing the free in and out of people and materials and uh, information. You know, for the down the road, anything uh, invented or you know, uh, you know, produced, the IP, intellectual property, has to be guaranteed. So this special district concept has been are communicated and in principle agreed with them. And uh, so uh, we are looking forward to have this uh, you know, special district right. How to participate? And we need uh, you know, prayer partners and also financial partners for the equipment and you know, operational costs. And also educational partners such as uh, uh, volunteer work and also faculty members. Uh, this is something which I am uh, you know, coming here for. We are looking for a long-term uh, faculty member spending two or three years in there. But uh, short term, meaning the one semester, which is four months, 
or uh, visiting scholars of uh, uh, one month or two weeks or even a day, you know, that is a visiting scholars. Even short term, if uh, four months is uh, you know, tough on you know, working uh, people like you, uh, probably to have a joint you know, lecture team, so two, two plus two months type arrangement can be made. So um, if there's anybody interested, certainly you know, uh, yeah, or contact us. This school took a lot of uh, materials. This bricks, 12 and a half million bricks signifies how difficult it was. And uh, yeah, with many reasons, uh, we had to bring the bricks from China. Uh, you know, one piece of brick costed about 20 cents, but after seven times of uploading, downloading from trucks and trains, and when it arrives at the site, it became dollar 20 cents. So that is one you know example of how difficult it was. However, we ended up working with uh, you know these people. They are North Korean soldiers, uh, but uh, mm, no, I would say their physical condition is really not you know, don't fit that uh, battle really type thing. Um, yeah, this their height is about my shoulder, and they look like uh, about. 14, 15 years old, boys and girls, but actually they are 25, 26 uh, years old adults. And according to what, you know, some study, it says it will take another 60 years to have equal physical conditions between South and North Korean you know, boys. That is a really sad story. I, I wanna just uh, remind you that Recent uh, Haiti earthquake, you know, this tragedy. It's, uh, I was really shocked by the, you know, uh, the magnitude and the number of people uh, affected, and I was uh, moved by the uh, the way the world, you know, uh, just uh, uh, tried to help them. That was really good, but at the same time, it reminds me of uh, Ethiopia and Africa a few years back. You know, they were, you know, about the same conditions and the world uh, community tried to help them. But it's ongoing, you know, uh, tragedy. But there is, a, you know, one country, a lot of people suffering for some reason, but uh, we don't hear about it. We forgot about it. It's been over 60 years, you know, and they made the, uh, uh, this malnutrition for generations, and really that's visible. And that's why we want to help the people, and that's why we are doing this. This picture is the uh, same, you know, uh, workers. Um, it reminds us uh, why we are doing this. Um, do you see t the bottom right corner, two soldiers wear the jacket, the winter jacket, uh, dawn jacket, really warm, nice, uh, manufactured by the graduate of uh, UST, the Chinese university. Um, those great students uh, really loved uh, President Kim, and no matter what he, he does, uh, they will support. And this particular uh, entrepreneur uh, happened to be she. She just uh, donated 800 uh, copies of uh, jackets for the good cause of uh, helping uh, neighboring country brothers and sisters. When he brought this 800 you know, copies, really warm and nice jacket, giving to them and made the comment say, you've been so good and we appreciate that. And even your brother and sisters in China is sending this thing for you. But remember, do the good job, build this school right because this is your school. I'm sh quite sure some of them had that you know, thing pierced in their heart. This is their school. 
And when we open the school, I'm sure I will see many of them say, yes, I was there. I got the dream of yours and your love. Yeah, we felt that. I hope many, many of those, these young soldiers would come. Yes, this school, this is the school. And uh, why education? And why North Korea? And why science technology? Uh, past six, over 60 years, uh, we've been trying to help them by food, clothing, and medical help, and so on. It is necessary, and we should keep doing that. But also, uh, it is endless, you know, uh, vicious circle. We like to teach them how to fish, not only giving them fish. And education is very essential, and we experienced that in China. Uh, that made people change, you know, change their lives, and they become uh, motivated, and they become the leader of their own family and society and so on. And uh, another example is Korea became very good country, South Korean became you know, very good country because of the education, educational institute which you know, those uh, uh, missionaries came in early days, uh, built a school and a hospital and so on. So I think we owe them so much on that great uh, uh, vision of school, made the people educated in the right way. Uh, so in addition to all those humanitarian aids, we like to uh, start this school so that uh, not only teach them uh, the knowledge, but also uh, share the, you know, our experience in the world with them so that they can be a good partner with the rest of the world when, they, when the time comes, such as North and South unified, and we should have somebody who can communicate with the South people or Western people. That's our goal of this school. And science technology, why science technology? is kind of a sensitive issue. Um, certainly, North is capable of making nuclear bomb and uh, missiles. But the area of uh, teaching, we certainly want to help the uh, people, so the agriculture and the basic science, including IT. And there's a certain uh, grade of uh, knowledge which we, we all know, commercial grade versus military grade. And I'm a mechanical engineer working in the nuclear power plants. So I know the difference between nuclear power plant and atomic bomb. And I, I'm not capable of making atomic bomb, but I can teach a nuclear power reactor and design and the commercial you know, usage of it. That's where we're coming from. And IT industry, IT knowledge can be used for weaponry thing. However, the professors we have not in that area of expertise and so on. But we like to help them to be able to work with the rest of the world. And we like to use their uh, highly educated uh, people working with us so that uh, we can be a partner in the uh, you know, earthly uh, village you know, community. Um, anything else? So I just wanted to give the audience and people who dialed in a chance to ask you questions. We have about 15 minutes left. And I also wanted to invite you guys to stay afterwards for lunch if you want to join Dr. Kim and a couple of us staying behind. Uh, and we also have um, Mike and Neil from the Trade and Compliance team. If you have questions about, well, it's North Korea as an individual or as a Googler, is it OK for me to participate? You know, They'll give you sort of general guidelines <coughs> on how you can. Um, so you can stick around and ask them questions. But, yeah, why don't I just uh, add one more thing before I forget, because I easily forget. <laughs> uh, this project, we've been uh, reporting everything, you know, regular basis to U.S. government. As a matter of fact, uh, I was in D.C. right before that snowstorm, 
meeting U.S. U.S. government, uh, state State Department uh, officers, and also uh, senator and gov uh, U.S. congressmen and those people. Make sure that what we are doing is legitimate in legal terms. And uh, we've been reporting everything what we've been doing quite regular basis, at least once a year. Uh, so, and also, as I said, uh, any equipment we are bringing in uh, should be regulated by EAR. Um, okay, where the money come from? Uh, mostly from uh, the grassroots type, you know, mostly Christians uh, in the U.S. and South Korea and all, all over the world. Um, one thing, in I've been working in North Korea past six and a half years, and I sometimes I got this comment: "You Christians are quite crazy." However, we trust you. Uh, they say we've been dealing with so many different type of people, but uh, Christians are only trustworthy people who delivers what they say. So that's how they see us. Even though we have a different idea and different, you know, uh, goal, but uh, uh, that's how we. They know who we are and they know our goals. And the common ground is we want to help the people there. And we believe education is something can achieve not only just you know small area, but broad based you know uh, good cause. Okay, so I'm ready to take. Yeah. All right. Questions or comments? Yeah. So, what's the admission process like? And oh, admission the, uh, process for the students. Uh, we do not get involved in you know, selecting peop, uh, students. Just like uh, China. China also. Can you uh, repeat the question? Sorry, someone is putting up their phone. Why don't you come over here and ask the question, then I'll okay. answer it. Okay, so I'll do the question uh, for the remote offices. The question was what's the admission process like? Um, are you interested in applying? <laughs> okay. okay. Um, Again, in China, it's China, all the students take the SAT type test. And by the score they apply, then government will decide who they will go. So in China, we don't interview or we don't get anything involved. We just get the students and we teach them. Same thing will happen in North, North Korea. Uh, they will do their own you know, selection process and we, we will receive. Any, any insight on what the process is like, or uh, is, there, is it a transparent process, or do you all know? I don't know. Okay. But one thing is that in you know, uh, February, they do have a, a period of a SAT type test for three days, seven subjects, and all the parents go cry crazy. I can see that. It's because of the result of that uh, test will be a uh, deciding factor for their lives, whether they go university or working place or a military service. So it, they are very uh, desperate on that you know, testing. That's all I know. Yes? Um, what kind of uh, immigration issues do you encounter, do you expect participants would encounter after going and participating in North Korea and the US. Um, so we're taking a question from here first, and then you can ask. Okay. Um, okay, so the question was uh, for the volunteers who want to volunteer. Um, so the question was for the volunteers, uh, what's the administrative like visa process like? Or anything else? Any security issues? Is that the sort of Yeah, right, like you get a hassle when you come to the United States. Oh, like, coming back, are there any mm. risks? Would you be flat in the State right. Department, etc.? <laughs> okay, um, not at all. That's why we've been uh, reporting and we've been informing our government. And uh, even I checked with our government, say, is it okay for me to go in and out uh, for doing this project? And I was told that uh, U.S. government doesn't have any concern on uh, individual going for their own uh, cause, not uh, you know uh, anything against the uh, U.S. policy and so on. 
So going for doing this pro project is OK. And uh, as I said, to make it more secure and safe, we are pro promoting that idea of a special district. They will make the visa process more simple. That's what we are looking for. So far, uh, any US citizens, uh, the visa process takes about four to six weeks. And uh, I would say, from my experience being there, safe. You know, is it safe to go there? Uh, when I come back to the Bay Area, I have to concern about, you know, earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> is it safe to be here? Yeah, I want to get out of this place as soon as possible. <laughs> and, uh, I wouldn't mind being in North Korea for the, that safety concern, you know. How many times have you been there? How many times? I forgot, but uh, past six and a half years. Um, about a month, once a month type, uh, but it is getting more uh, often. Then April and on, I will be there in a permanent Just a follow-up question. What about going to South Korea after having been to North Korea? Do they not have any issues with you having been to North Korea? Okay, so just to repeat that. Yeah. Um, uh, the gentleman asked, uh, what about going to South Korea after going to North Korea? Are there any issues? No, not at all. They don't stamp your passport, by the way. They don't what? No, they, don't, they do not stamp the passport. They, uh, no, so North Korea does not stamp your passport. OK, uh, in the front. Um, and then I will take the VC question next, sorry. Are, is there any knowledge about whether the students, after they've graduated, will be allowed to work internationally? Or will they be restricted to remaining within North Korea? OK, so the question is, uh, the graduates, are they able to work internationally or not? I guess since the school hasn't opened yet, I think it's TB. I uh, will answer, but then you can comment from the Chinese university, the East, and then I guess the as well. Right, it's yet to be seen, but uh, China, in China, used, we do have a uh, exchange student program with about 25 uh, colleges in, in the South Korea and US. So we exchange students on semester basis, and also after graduation. Uh, they go for uh, greater study in all the countries. That is our hope. You know, we haven't come to that point yet. But uh, in say uh, three, five years, students, you know, freely exchange and go abroad. Not only the students, but also professors can go. You know, as exchanging professors. That is our dream. Now, have you gotten any indication from from the, the, the government or the the, the uh, higher ups as to whether they want to I think that's a speculation. That. I don't want to do that okay. no officially. Right. Okay. So, um, question from the remote offices. Hi, um, <clears throat> thanks, Dr. Kim, for sharing this incredible initiative. Um, I, I have two quick questions. Um, um, other than us going and you know, you know, do a lecture, is there any other things that, that we can help, um, um, you know, to, to help you help help what you're doing? And also, let's say if we can travel to North Korea for, for like like a week or two uh, for a quick lecture, when is the best time for us to go? Um, yeah, not only uh, the regular lectures, uh, we are uh, uh, organizing. Number one, international conference of a certain subject. And uh, you can join there. And also, we have an IT program. We have a seminar, series of seminars as an introduction to the course. And in that, we are inviting uh, many uh, front runners or experts in the world. So, in that class, uh, we will have a lot of different, you know, wide range of uh, you know, uh, experts in that class. And also, I, I would encourage you know, Google employees have a group just to visit us and see us. And also, we will have um, sort of a one hour special lecture to the students. That's what we're hoping. In China, every Friday, 3 to 5, we will have uh, the uh, guest speakers from variety of uh, you know uh, uh, backgrounds. Students see the world through the 
speakers. Like uh, students see the world through me, me living with them. Actually, the students and uh, faculty members living in the same campus in China, and uh, they visit us very freely. We almost like uh, live like a family, and that's how we interact, and that's uh, uh, how they see the world through us. So I don't know. I did I answer your question? You also asked when's the best time to visit. Best time? Uh, I'd rather say best time is school time and best time, you know, to meet you. You know, recover. Any time is the best time. One th one thing is. Uh, summer vacation, we plan to have uh, uh, in China. During summer session, all the regular faculty members don't take any classes. It is all for the outsiders. So all the outsiders come in and have uh, uh, classes for four weeks to five weeks. That's where the students meet outsiders. So if you can come in summertime for four weeks, that will be great. If you can come in only one week, that's also fine. And if you can come only at three days, that's fine too. So just come and visit us. And there were questions around, um, is there anything else besides teaching that people can help out with? Uh, certainly, uh, we like to have uh, uh, equipment. Right now, we need uh, computers and desks and chairs and uh, you know, basic, uh, you know, uh, kitchen equipment for uh, making food and so on. So, yeah, certainly uh, we need your uh, help, support, donations, and just ask your family and brothers and sisters. Actually, when I talked this to my uh, church friends uh, a couple of months ago, Christmas time, there was a mood about, uh, yeah, why don't you just give a uh, Christmas present to someone who we don't know, but uh, that certainly will help. So ended up getting, you know, our family, family of four, we donated uh, four computers, uh, so that uh, will go in. So nowadays, I believe uh, each computer will cost around 500 bucks. So uh, that is one way. Okay, class, we have a class. So this seems to be like a pretty major step towards opening North Korea, which has been quite isolated so far. So I was wondering, did you meet any opposition from the North Korean government, and how did you manage to convince them to open a university, like post them a special district, like the one you were talking about? Okay, so let me repeat that. So, um, you know, North Korean government's been isolated. How did they go about uh, doing, uh, pursuing this initiative? Any resistance? and especially opening up the, what was it called, techno club or camp? Special zone. Special zone. <laughs> OK. Um, I cannot t tell the exact, but history will tell us later on. But it's my you know, uh, as, you know, assessment is that since uh, uh, the Eastern Bloc collapsed in 1989, about 20 years ago, uh, North Korea doesn't have any of their brothers you know, exist anymore to send the students. So my observation is that there's a big vacuum in their uh, faculty you know, uh, demography. And they've been watching this uh, school in uh, China used uh, for a long time. At, in the beginning, they objected having this school in the backyard of their you know, uh, country. But later on, they, see, they saw Yeonbyon University of Science and Technology. You know, we do not uh, object any of that socialistic country's policy or anything. Rather, we encourage the students to uh, be more patriotic and love each other, and uh, even uh, encourage them to be a Communist Party member. So seeing all this, they realize that we are not against the uh, government. We are there for the people and the good cause and actually help them to advance their uh, career and life and all those things. So it is them to ask us to come in and build this school. Same thing in China, so why not? So we are there. But my, you know, uh, 
uh, rationale, probably they want, they figure out, instead of sending their students to abroad, which they don't have any control, and some of them, you know, have a different result than what they expected. Now they ask us to come in, and inside of this fence, they have a better control of us and the students. So that, that's what I kind of speculate. Yes. Okay. Um, another guy has questions. So, uh, this new place will have like uh, uh, unfiltered internet access. So the question is, uh, is internet access unfiltered? That I don't know, but we will see how it happens. So even just the filtered uh, internet access will be a great thing uh, to start with. Okay, we don't get everything at once. Even China, uh, the first classes were monitored by the official monitors sitting back with a note. <laughs> but it has progressed quite a bit. So the real, you know, uh, good thing is internet access for the students. That is promised. And it may not happen overnight, but uh, no matter what, how uh, the fiber optics was installed from the school to uh, uh, the nearest. Uh, uh, and actually, I wanted to show you some pictures. And This is our uh, conference room with these two screens, so somewhat like what we have over here. So it is a, a remote uh, learning center and uh, conferencing, video conferencing cap uh, cap capability, which you need uh, internet access, and that's what we will get. Okay. Okay, front row. Uh, yeah, so I have a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, you were talking about sending computers to uh, North Korea and uh, sort of like installing fiber optics. Is there any uh, problems with the sanctions or is, is there any restrictions that are uh, imposed uh, on PUSH with regards to the sanctions that the U.S. has uh, to North Korea? And the second question would be, um, is there a, uh, you, you were talking about the special uh, form of visa for people uh, going to post. So um, I, was, I wasn't sure um, if you are uh, more lenient uh, towards um, being detained by the uh, North Korean authority in any way, or is, is there a possibility of uh, that happening? <laughs> and the third question is, uh, okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if that's all satisfied, if everything's all right, um, so it will be a question for um, you guys too, but um, is there anything prohibiting us like legally uh, with respect to like say opening up a Google office in uh, Pyongyang? <laughs> okay, so he asked uh, three questions. Five. Uh, like was it five? What was the first one? <laughs> 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 you know the questions? Uh, I think one was about um, sending the um, equipment. Are there any, uh, is there, a, uh, what are the issues around it? And then secondly, it was the special visa that you asked about. Um, is there any chance of being detained? And then third, it was, uh, uh, are there any legal restrictions for individuals uh, to participate in this kind of program? Okay. Uh, uh, equipment. Certainly they are, you know, certain equipment not allowed to go into uh, that country. So that's what EAR stands for. And uh, some of them are applicable and some of them not. And computers, not all, some you know, low-tech computers can go in, but high-tech computers and you know, servers which can, be, uh, can have a dual use, say a military use, yeah, they are restricted. So we are not bringing those things. So answer is yes, so we are very uh, sens sensitive to make that decision. And what was the, the other one? Detained. Can you be detained? If you do anything illegal in the country, that you can be detained. <laughs> yeah. what is illegal there. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to go in anymore. And uh, what's the third one? The third one was uh, more question for uh, Mike, I guess, uh, the legality around participating. Maybe Mike can comment. Okay. 
Yeah, first I'd, I'd just say uh, check with us before you do anything. <laughs> from a Google What's standpoint, from a Google standpoint, as an individual, um, you know, do what you want, but I advise you to check with somebody before you go off and do something. There are um, heavy sanctions on pretty much everything, so even um, low-level equipment that you think, you know, this is pretty low-level. Uh, we we have to. Given the, the goal of it, we have to apply for a license, and maybe there's a possibility we get it. But um, even a, a low-level computer is still controlled to North Korea, unfortunately, because um, it still has dual-use items. So, um, but we'd be happy to work with people to see what we could do about getting things there if, if Google decided to want to donate things like that. Um, there are uh, other restrictions on on individuals. There's um, there's something called a, a deemed export rule, so that if a, a North Korean citizen was uh, in this country, there'd be limits on what could be um, shared with that person. Um, it's true of any country, but because uh, the controls are so tight on North Korea, uh, there really are strong limits on what could be shared. And likewise, going there, there's certain limitations on, on what technical data could be shared. There are some exceptions related to education, um, and, and then anything that's publicly available. But uh, again, I'd advise checking with, there's an export at google.com alias. We'd be happy to work with anybody who, who wants to share just to be, to be sure that we don't um, run into any issues. And give a plug to the, the alias too. So, so uh, if, if you have anything in question, ask him, okay? <laughs> okay, good. So we already have a question here. Uh, so I wonder, who was, who, raise your hand if you have a question. Okay. So we have the website up there, but how are we get in touch with you directly if we are interested? Me? Yeah. Can I pass on, on your contact info to Yeah, you? just a Gmail, you know, it's easy. Kimbap, you know, if you like Kimbap. K-I-M-B-B-O-B, right? At gmail.com. It actually is like a... Korean sushi. Kimbap. <laughs> okay. So K I M B B O P. B. B B O P. Uh, like Kim B Bob. Oh okay. god. Okay. <laughs> At gmail.com. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then yeah, I'll follow it up. Okay. Uh, any question, question, any question VC there? questions? Uh, yeah, uh, oh. Number two. Uh, which look? The guy. The room with the two guys. <laughs> okay. Well, I have a question. I mean, he, Dr. Kim mentioned about the U.S. citizenship and the U.S. government. What about other restrictions about the citizenship? For example, like a Korean citizenship or in Korean government? Because I'm basically Korean, and South I wonder Korea, right? how it works. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, we had a you know agreement in principle. Uh, this uh, the faculty will be coming from one third internationally, one-third from South Korea, one-third from uh, Korean foreigners. So South Koreans will consist of around one-third, and uh, uh, another one-third will be uh, Korean foreigners like me. Uh, I'm a U.S. citizen. And another one-third just like uh, uh, the rest of the world. So this is international university. So South Koreans will go. Uh, but for the moment, uh, there is a uh, uh, uneasiness between South and North. So for the moment, uh, yeah, uh, South Koreans may not go this fall, uh, this uh, April. But eventually, it will be, you know, uh, okay. We hope that that day will come sooner. But uh, okay. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is not a question of substance, but of a question of the kind of curiosity. The, your contact info, well, it's gone now, but the post the moment ago says that uh, PUST.KI. Yep. As you know, uh, KI is the CCTAD for South Korea, and the CCTAD for the North Korea is KP. <coughs> so this is related to the internet situation in North Korea. So I've never seen that any uh, domain registered under the North Korean CCTLD, KP. Uh, so I was so, um, wondering 
what the North Korean students studying at PUST would feel if the email address is somebody at <laughs> PUST.kr <laughs> instead of PUST.kp. It will be Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, again, that uh, website is KR, which is South Korea site, which we will get, you know, we will have information for you and we'll get your interest logged in, then we'll get, you know, notified so that we can communicate. And I do have a, you know, email address of that KR, you know, KP, but uh, uh, I don't, you know, communicate easily with, you know, using that. So right now, let's stick with the, what KR and uh, the other one. At, okay. So, I okay. We're, we're one more time, and I want to take that VC question, except I can't read it well. Can you slide it down a little? Down? <laughs> okay. Is it North Korea under a complete embargo by the U.S. government? Is it legal to send any equipment at all from the U.S. to North Korea? Do you want to comment, Neil? Uh, Mike? And uh, we'll just take one more question after this, and then we can go to lunch, and you guys can stick around uh, to comment. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Um, I, I wish there was a simple answer, but the best answer is probably just to say yes. You know, pretty much any equipment would be restricted going to North Korea. There's actually different levels of embargo. So Cuba, Iran, and Sudan are the tightest level, and then North Korea and, and Syria are just a little bit above that. So, but for all practical purposes, pretty much anything uh, you should check first. Um, anything would need a license. Um, there's minor exceptions, but... That's why we apply for a license from Commerce Department, that EAR, so that's what we do, okay? So your comment is right, and uh, you know, his uh, you know, definition is right, and that's what we are working on. We, are, we have applied that uh, uh, license. I'm sure you guys have a legal team looking into all these matters, right? We have been looking at that uh, for a long time. And we, we are complying with uh, U.S. law and international law. Okay. We are aware of that. One more question there, except that it's slanted, <coughs> the angle isn't, oh my gosh, now you guys are all doing it. She's thinking about travel, $5,000 oh, travel through uh, Beijing. Is there a better way to, to do that? Oh, how do we get to North Korea? Is that the basic question? Yeah, it looks like that. Okay, well, we're going to assume that's the question. Um, how do we, what's the best way to get to North Korea from here? Best way to no go North Korea. Uh, North Korea, Pyongyang, uh, there's a flight between Pyongyang to Beijing and Pyongyang to uh, Shenyang. Sh from Shenyang to uh, Pyongyang, it takes only 40 minutes flight and Beijing one hour and 40 minutes. And so it is a matter of uh, you coming from this Bay Area to Incheon, then Shenyang, and Pyongyang is the shortest route. Or you go to Beijing, then go to uh, Pyongyang from Beijing is another route. So I don't think it'll take five thousand dollars unless you, both of you, going. Okay. So, have you ever crossed the North South Korean border instead of going through the that Beijing no, Ocean? No, that no, no. We are we are looking for the the land, uh, you know, uh, passage between South and North Korea. One day it will be done. Because uh, uh, I didn't know, but I realized that between Seoul and Pyongyang is only one, you know, 130 miles away. And the freeway is pretty good. And so it will take only two hours. But right now, from Seoul to Pyongyang, then Pyongyang. So one day, that passage will be open. And okay. um, Let's take that paper question, uh, except that we can't read it. Just, can you just read it yourself? We can hear you. Hey. Yeah, can uh, you? Yeah. My is, is Google supporting Googlers visiting uh, North Korea, visiting the Pyongyang University? 
for volunteering I, there? I don't think anyone's here who can answer that question, and that's a more complicated question. So let's pursue it at the individual level first, and then if you guys are really psyched about this, then you guys can really email me, and if the, you know, maybe we can get something going. But at this moment, nothing official. Uh, let's just keep it informal. Um, any last, we'll take last comment or question from the room, and then we'll go to lunch. Okay. okay. I just have a comment. I've been to North Korea. We've been working in North Korea for a long time. Many, many organizations are doing a lot of activities there. We're in the middle of finishing up a very large hospital that is donated by the Church of Korea in the middle of the most, you know, it's a beautiful campus in North Korea. And the whole idea is we want to love on them. And, you know, I think Christine knows that I'm not a communist. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so I want to say thank you, Dr. Kim and you know, Dr. Kim jin Young, for the amazing vision and the most amazing, miraculous breakthroughs you've had to be able to finish that building. It's a miracle. Thank you so much for all that hard work. Thank you for so, the kind words. Uh, it was a comment that it's a miracle that Dr. Kim and team were able to make headway into North Korea. And that um, you know some conspiracy theories like are Dr. Kim and, and another you know Dr. Kim both Dr. Kims are the agents of North Korea you know it's not the case you know but anyhow let's end up that let's end on that note and go to lunch thank you Dr. Kim for your talk. Thank you. Thank you.